right, so uh, hello. Are you still in here? Wait, hello? Um, I am, um, oh, look at there. Is my mom out there? Is that, is that you, mom? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I see you, Miss Crawford. <laughs> um, I am really grateful um, for this next uh, conversation. So I'm going to say a little bit about April Ryan. She is going to um, to come out, say a few words. We're going to talk a little bit and then have some room for, for Q&A. And just, I wanted to give you context and background. So um, I see Mark, and gosh, maybe a month, two months ago, uh, Commonwealth Club had um, the moderator for something that was happening canceled. And they asked me if I, um, if I would fill in. And so some folks know that I like love, love, love books. Um, and I don't like to like talk to people about their books if I haven't read them. And so um, I'm not an avid reader. You know, some people are like, I read all the time. Like I love to read, but I read children's books. Like you could read that in 20 minutes. And, um, but the book they gave me, <laughs> but the book was like, you know, I had like two days to read hundreds of pages. And let me tell you, it read so beautiful and so easily. And the writing and the writer did such an amazing job. And so the book was Black Women Will Save the World by April Ryan. And after the conversation, I was like, I would love to have you come to San Francisco because I'm practicing being bold and asking for things that, you know, I think I won't get. And she said yes. So here we are today. Give it up for April Ryan. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to, and I said all of that to say, I said all of that to say, like, let's understand. Oh, y'all standing up? She's okay. Look, I said all of that to say because Alicia Garza and April Ryan have, they command rooms, they have access to so many things, and so often people get up and they talk about the importance of community, grassroots, the, important, uh, the importance of um, folks who are leading the work, and then when you reach out to them, they don't have time for them. And like, that's, that's very real, folks. Like, I just need people to understand. A lot of times people are front and center and saying like, they're down with the cause, but they don't want the cause to come to their house, right? And so, when she said yes, I was blown away. Um, same thing with Alicia, like the commitment to stay rooted and grounded is amazing. And so that, that's why I tell you that story because I want you to re appreciate and respect that, um, as they say, she's a real one, right? So I'm just gonna read a little bit, which I, I'm most impressed by a couple of things. Like I can't, some of us can't stand 25 minutes of being the only one in a room. 25 years, she was the only black correspondent for the White House, right? Like that's a huge thing, yes, give it up. And some of that time, Um, so April Ryan is a stalwart of the White House Press Corps who is currently at the White House correspondent and Washington Bureau Chief for the GRIO. Previously, Ryan served as the White House correspondent and Washington Bureau Chief for American Urban Radio Networks for 23 years. Throughout her illustrious career, she has investigated the issues reshaping American society in exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews with our nation's leaders, movers, and shakers, including Presidents Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Michelle Obama, Laura Bush, Hillary Clinton, Al Gore, John Kerry, and many others. In addition to the griot, Ryan can be seen almost daily as a political analyst on CNN. She has also been featured in leading publications including Politico, Essence, Vogue, Cosmopolitan, and Elle, and is the author of most recently of Black Women Will Save the World, an anthem as well as the award-winning book, The Presidency in Black and White, along with At Mama's Knee, Mothers and Race in Black and White and Under Fire. Reporting from the front lines of the Trump White House, give it up for her because she took some, she took some real fire for staying true. A trailblazing figure in political journalism, Ryan's accomplishments and contributions have been recognized with various awards and accolades. And so I could go on and on, but I want us to just now, y'all can stand up and clap for April Ryan.
good at morning or afternoon here? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Black History Month, right? <laughs> it is such an honor to be back at the Commonwealth Club, and I'm catching up backstage with my good, good friend. Whew. History herself, Frederica Newton. I know, right. And I think about yesterday to today, the cyclical nature of this moment the cyclical nature of this moment. And I'm gonna talk for a little bit before I sit down and we have conversation. Thank you so much for inviting me back. This is one of the best moments in San Fran, right? <laughs> um, it's good to be away from the White House, right? <laughs> I got time off <laughs> just to come to be with you. But I'm gonna give you a little bit, thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for putting your hands out at the TV when I was in trouble. If it weren't for you supporting me, I don't think I would be here. I mean, really be here. Because y'all called it out. And you saved my life and my children's lives. I'm serious. But this moment that we're in, it makes you kind of want to cry. And I think about Tuesday night, how many of you stayed up and watched the State of the Union address? For those of you who didn't, shame on you. <laughs> it's on YouTube, go back and watch it. <laughs> the reason why I say how many of you watched it, because I happened to be blessed to be part of a group, 11 people, influencers, media influencers, who had the honor to have lunch with the President of the United States before the address. He said he was in a good space. I can't tell you what he said. I can't tell you what we did. But I am going to share a little bit with you. Because it put um, the exclamation mark on this moment and gave me a little bit more understanding of this moment. Because I keep saying, why? Why are we here? So many people fought, bled, and died for this moment, for freedom, for first class citizenship. And where are we now? Hate is on the rise. Sarah Huckabee Sanders talking all this contradiction after the president. Now, how many of you watched that part? Ooh, child, it was hard. Ooh, it was hard. I sat in that audience doing the briefing, listening to those lies every day. And then she lying again after the president. And she's governor of Arkansas and could possibly be the running mate with Donald Trump. Can you imagine? For real, we are in a moment. And at that, going back to the lunch, this current president, the 46th president of the United States said, every two to five generations, we go backwards, right? Right, I wrote that down. Every two to five generations. Now look what Frederica and the Black Panther Party did. Look what Dr. King, who would have been 94 this year, look what he did. When was that? 1950s, 60s. This is 2023. I'm a journalist in rarefied air, in one of the most exclusive places and a perch to watch America, 150 feet away from the President of the United States. It took all of y'all, Black Panther Party, Dr. King, Malcolm, all of them, all of them, to get a little girl from Baltimore like me to raise my hand for 26 years to ask questions of a United States president and for them to call me by name. Yeah. At least four called me by my name. <laughs> and that's the truth, you saw it. <laughs> Sit down. Can you get the Black Caucus together for me for a meeting? I'm just a journalist. For whatever reason, you didn't want to answer my questions you were afraid of because I asked questions about a community 
that still has the highest numbers of negatives in every category in this moment. A community that is losing its rights. First class citizenship is still elusive. I am not an activist, I'm telling you from the unique perch that I sit. Voting rights, the full protections thereof are gone. 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 We're voting in places and spaces where there's suppression. I can't give my grandmother a crack if her sugar is off or we'll go to jail while she's standing in line for two hours in a poll where they've pulled some of the, the machines and ballots away. It almost sounds like if we put a sepia tone picture together, it almost sounds like decades ago yesterday. Those are the questions I ask about. Being black in America is tough. We are still dealing with something we dealt with from the inception of our time here in this nation. Enslaved Africans in America were patrolled by what? Sheriffs and police. Enslaved Africans were patrolled. We heard the story of Kunta Kinte. We watched Roots. So don't act like you don't know. If you don't know, you better go ask somebody. Go Google it. No, I'm serious. And people are like, oh, it's just started happening. Oh my God. You know, Trayvon Martin. No, that wasn't policing. That was a vigilante. Let's try. Ahmaud Arbery was lynched as well. That was vigilanteism in the back of a truck. Young black man had a dream. Young black man had a dream. That were a dream. That were a dream. We all dream, right? But that young black man wanted better. He believed in what everybody said decades ago. That dream that we still dream today. He had a dream of a nice home. Everybody sees construction along the way, right? Everybody does. He was jogging along on the street. And they don't tell you about this because they wanted to make sure that they didn't kind of a uh, change the dynamic of what could happen in that trial. Because along that street, there were Trump signs all along that street. Yeah, they didn't tell you about that, right, Frederick? But he's jogging away for his dream and sees this house. Wow, beautiful construction. I like driving through neighborhoods where they told my parents years ago that you can't live in. Redlining that came out of Baltimore, the city that I was born in. So I like to dream too. But unfortunately, you know, everybody on that street with the Trump signs said, oh my gosh, we got this guy in this neighborhood. Who is he? Why? Well, everybody else white was going in there too. But the young black man who had a dream of better, who wanted to live the American dream, was gunned down like an animal with a shotgun, bullets went through him. Through him, not in him, but through. He had no chance. They hunted him down like an animal. And then, in a trial, what are they gonna do? This is America, right? America that we still love in spite of. We are patriotic because we want to see her better. We talk about her because we wanna see better, right? We march in the streets because, and I say we collectively, I scribe what you're doing, but we march in the streets because we want better. We want what Dr. King dreamed of, first class citizenship, what the Black Panther Party said, first class citizenship, health, food for our children, fight against sickle cell and so many others. The plan that they had is being enacted now and they don't get the credit for it, right, Frederica? Let's talk about that part. The clinics that they're funding now